Today I'll talk about my favorite lens for landscape photography. I'll photograph with this lens in different locations to show you what it can do. I'll talk about the pros and cons of using such a lens and the advantages of having such a lens in your camera kit. So let's get started. Hey everyone, my name is Toma, Photo Tom here on YouTube and this channel is all about landscape photography so if you're interested in this topic make sure to subscribe for more similar videos also if you want to support me there's a link in the description of this video you can go there and check out my ebook on landscape photography and uh, now let's get back to the topic from today and that is to talk about my favorite lens in this really beautiful uh, setting So one of the reasons I really like the 24 to 105 it's because it's so versatile. I can use it as a wide angle lens and also as a telephoto. Of course, it's not uh, either of those. I mean, you can't consider this a wide angle lens for landscape photography at least, uh, where I think a 17 millimeter works much better. I also have that lens, but if I have to take only one lens with me, that is the 24 to 105. It's not that tele it doesn't have that uh, a focal length that uh, that long but combining that with the ability to switch my mirrorless Canon EOS R to um, crop to have a 1.6 multiplication factor the 105 becomes a lot longer so in terms of uh, of a telephoto lens I think it's enough for the way I'm photographing there are people that uh, photograph more with the 70 to 200 but I found out that over time I for, I'm photographing less and less with that lens so the 24 to 105 I think it's the perfect range of focal length for me the lens I've talked about is this one over here it's the Canon 24 to 105 millimeters f4 ISL lens and let me also explain this first shot so as you can see on my camera I have the water of the lake I don't have uh, these vegetation elements over here and I don't capture the sky either so I'm having the water and that yellow tree over there that pine tree and I'm waiting for the light to hit there as you can see right over there the light is starting to hit that peak so very soon it's gonna come down and uh, get in that area still waiting for the light to go on that tree over there I really hope this happens <laughs> Anyway, in the meantime, on the other side of the lake, I can clearly hear a bear. You can't hear it on the camera, but he's, out, he's over there on the other side. It's not a problem for me here, so don't start to ask questions if I'm not afraid. Right here in this location, I'm not afraid. I, I mean, I'm close to a road, I'm close to my car. The bear is over there. As I said in a previous vlog, patience and perseverance are key to a landscape photographer there are minus two degrees and it's really cold and the light it's not hitting that tree <laughs> I, I really hope the sun trajectory didn't change that much in one month uh, and I will see the light on on that tree but uh, another good lesson is to be open to what is actually happening not and not waiting for a certain thing to happen because the minute that thing will not happen it can get you down I have other uh, location planned for today so there is no problem if I don't see that light over there even though I want to see it and I want to create that spectacular shot
while I was waiting for that light that it seems that will never come or I don't know when it's gonna come I decided to take a few other shots of At this point, it's very clear that the light will come a lot later on those trees, meaning that it will hit them hard, the light is gonna, the light is gonna be too harsh to be worth photographing it. So, um, what I will do right now is change location and do another shot, uh, because over here I used mostly the long end of this lens, and it's time to have a wider shot. For this shot I'm using the 24 end of this lens and I'm framing the rock in front of me in a panoramic format where I place the rock to the left of the frame and then I have a diagonal of the pine trees climbing to the rock. I also used the polarizer to dim down the brightness of the sky. change location again and right now I really like that tree in the background and I'm sitting really low and I already have two photos in my head the first one is more of a close-up I'm using the 47 millimeter focal length and I'm framing only the tree with the small waterfall in the background I really like the leaves of the tree so that's my first shot for the second photo i used 24 millimeter focal length but i increased the iso to 640 to manage an exposure time that will have that feeling in the water that it's it's not milky smooth but you can guess the movement of the water This is the third place for this day and again the reason I'm stopping it's because of that waterfall and I also have a really beautifully colored tree in the background that you're gonna see very soon. Now I'm preparing the gear, I'm mounting my camera and I'm already thinking about the possibilities in this location and the first idea is to go closer and to take a closer shot of the waterfall but very soon I realized that if I'm going to include the yellow leaves tree it's gonna look a lot better so uh, for that reason I'm stepping back and I'm framing the waterfall also with the tree and I'm also including a little bit of light that it's starting to... Another reason why I prefer this lens and why I suggest uh, not necessarily having this lens in your uh, bag but maybe something similar is bec it's because I like to move really fast I don't like to sit in one place to take the same photo over and over again I like to move and uh, the less weight I have on my back <laughs> the faster I go biggest complaint about this lens is that it's not very sharp well I don't mind that I can increase the sharpness in post I can I can uh, adjust that what I what I want is a lens that lets me photograph in the way that I want that's far more important for me than just a little bit of sharpness not always as a landscape photographer you're going out there to take the best shots of your life uh, oftentimes you take crappy photos because the light is not what what you would want it to be but this this is the charm this is the this is the beauty of landscape photography I'm already seeing some light over there so 
this time I, this time I'm gonna catch it. Let me know in comments below what is your favorite lens for landscape photography. If you would have to take only one lens with you, what that lens would be. Now, don't forget about my ebook if you want to support me. The link is in the description of this video. Until next time, keep on photographing because it's the only way to get better. Thanks for watching. Bye bye.